Hello everyone and welcome. In this video I'd like to show how to set up the Micmac GUI, graphical user interface for Micmac, and uh, run through a quick sample and a little bit of database setup. Okay, here is the web page where you can download the software. Uh, the first thing you need to do is to install Micmac and there's a link here to the installation pages on the Micmac Wiki. And over here, we have a couple of links for YouTube videos that show how to install Micmac. After Micmac is installed, you can come down and download the uh, software. The Windows version comes in two versions. There's a setup and then there's a standalone. With the standalone, is you can just download it and run it. And with the setup, it'll set it up on your system, just like any other program. I have already downloaded the setup, so I'm going to go to my folder. And here it is. I'm just going to double click to install it. Installing, please wait. And after it installs, it just opens up the software. Okay, the first thing to get set up is to go to start. You can see all the buttons are grayed out because it doesn't know where Micmac is found. So you scroll down and we push the Micmac 3D path button. And we can choose the Micmac executable. Okay, I have it installed under Programs, MacWin, Bin, and I choose the Micmac 3D DXE. Until it open, and it doesn't need to restart Micmac for it to take effect. So I'm going to close it down and start it up again. All right, go back to start, and we see everything has been activated. So that'd be in the safe way, I'll clear file. And I'll copy some images that I have. My samples folder, go into the Kermit example. Now select all the files and open. And I'll come back to errors saying it did not find this camera in the database and it didn't find a 35 millimeter equivalent in the image itself so you either need to add it to the database or run this function over here which will give it some dummy data that'll allow micmac to continue and hopefully get a solve so i'm going to close that and i'll actually open the file browser That'll open it to the temporary folder where the images were copied. Look at the properties. Details. This is the information that's available within the image itself. And if we come down, you see it's the focal length of 55 millimeters, but it has no 35 millimeter defined within it. If it did, we could go ahead and use it as is, but it doesn't, so. Close that out. So what you want to do is want to import a new database. Then I go back to the web page, and you can see the link to the database down here at the bottom, the camera database. What you do is you just go here. Got to go to the GitHub page, camera sensor size database. You do code and download the zip. I've already done this, and here it is right here. Let me go ahead and unzip that. And there it is. I'm going to be using the detailed database, I believe. Oh, I actually don't remember. I'll have to 
check and see. I'm going to right click on the import. Yeah. It says right here, sensor detailed. Yeah, that's one of the features. You can right click anywhere you see the question mark appear and get some help there. It shows up giving a little bit of guidance. Okay, onward. I'm going to go ahead and press import. I'm going to go to that. That's on my desktop. Downloads. Sensor database, and I want the detailed and open. And I'll wait a minute for that to finish loading up. And here it is. About 3,600 cameras were added. I'm going to clear the files and start over again. So I'll clear file and copy images. And this is going to show a problem with the specific, with the database, there's an error. I'm going to go back into my Kermit, grab those files, open, and it says I did not find it in the Micmac camera database, did not find it in the user camera database, which is the one we just downloaded, but I found a similar Canon PowerShot A10 the problem is right here. It's a lowercase s, where the database has an uppercase s, or rather, vice versa. So I'm going to have look for that Canon PowerShot 810 and change that to a capital. Here it is, Canon PowerShot 810. Change that to a capital S and tell it to save the cameras. Okay. Again, I'm going to copy the images again. And this time everything should be okay. And there we go. We found the camera in the user camera database. So I can move on to the next step, which is uh, point or feature detection and matching. It'll find common points between points and uh, make a database of uh, all the matching points. So I have to do is come down here, just push run, and let that uh, do its thing. Now some of these steps will take a long time to run, even on this small data set, and I'll just uh, fast forward the video to get past them more quickly. Okay, that's done in 25 minutes. We close that. And right over here, we have the points showing that were matched between the images. Here we are, I'll turn the play point skip down to show all the points. And as I go between them, it shows the matching points. But that's not needed. So next is the to pause step. What this does is it takes those points in the image of data and creates cameras from them. I'm going to come down here to orient final just to tell it that this is the only time I'm going to be running it. And push run. Uh, changing to Orient Final isn't really necessary for this simple case, but it does put in marks. Okay, that finished after only 10 seconds, showing the amount of error, and green is good. At this point, I'll go to the, the Paracloud step, which makes a 3D preview of the points based on those. Uh, There we go. And here it is. I'm going to make the points bigger. We have here is the 3D points that were found on the matching. And over here is the positions of each of the cameras.
at this point, you'd have the option of uh, filtering out the, or masking out the points. Like these points are probably the only ones that are interesting. And then there's some background points over here that probably aren't useful. I'm going to skip that and skip on ahead to C3DC, which is a dense point cloud. I'll just push the highlighted button and let that do its thing. And the steps I'm showing here, the just the bare minimum needed to just get a result. And the steps are documented on the web page here in the basic minimal workflow. This is what I'm basically doing right here. That's done. We have our dense cloud. I'll make those points bigger too. You can see the rough outline of Kermit in his environment. Under normal circumstances, at this point, you'd probably want to import this uh, point cloud into another piece of software to build your textured meshes. Because these next two steps are, they never got out of the experimental stage as far as I can tell from what I've read. So TI punch is the next step. What this will do is create a, a mesh from the points. If we look here, see a little bit of Kermit, his hand right here, and his face sticking out over here a little bit. Now we got the final step, tequila, and this will turn it into a textured mesh. And there we have the final textured mesh. And at this point, you could uh, export the mesh to a variety of formats, OBJ, uh, Colada, and what else? I already, oh, GLTF. OK, and that ends the demonstration of how to install the Micmac GUI and a quick run through to see how it works. Uh, thanks for watching.